Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to work non-destructively inside of Photoshop and Photop and why you absolutely should be. Working non-destructively means making edits without permanently changing your original layers. It's about setting things up in a way where you can always go back, tweak, remove, or adjust something without having to redo the whole thing or even portions of it from scratch. For example, probably the most basic form of working non-destructively is when you have a rasterized layer. With my layer right here, if I right click on it and do rasterized layer to have a rasterized layer, if I just grab my brush tool and draw on it, and let's say I then go ahead and make a bunch of different changes. If I keep working later and decide I don't like this drawing anymore, I can't just click Control Z anymore because I've already made a bunch of different changes and I'll be undoing all those other changes I made. And I also can't just go back to my original layer and just erase it because as you're gonna see, it also erases the layer underneath. So you'd have to either re-import your original render or start the whole thing over. So then the opposite of that, the most basic form to working non-destructively would be as simple as just adding in a new layer and drawing on this layer. From there, I can make whatever other changes I need to make and at any time I can come back to my original drawing layer here, I can hide it, I can erase it and there's no changes being applied to my original layer. So working non-destructively can be super handy and I definitely recommend implementing it into your workflow. So now that you know what working non-destructively is, let's get into the three main ways to do it. The first main way to work non-destructively is with smart objects. Smart objects let you like protect your original layer while still editing it. Think of it as like wrapping your layer in a container. Any edits you make don't directly affect the original pixels inside. You can always go back and change things later on. To tell if your layer is a smart object or a, just a rasterized layer, you can just tell by looking at the little icon of your layer here. If it's just normal like that, it is a rasterized layer. If it is a smart object which by the way you can convert it to a smart object by just right clicking on it and do convert to smart object and then you'll be able to tell it's a smart object by the little icon in the corner of it so one of the main reasons to use smart objects is for scaling if i have my layer here that is set to a smart object i just shrink it down apply the shrink like that and then scale it back up you'll see that nothing's changed at all but if i go ahead and right click and rasterize the layer if i now go ahead and shrink it down apply that and then scale it back up you're going to see now it's actually super blue because you're applying those changes to the pixels directly to the layer which causes it to just end up blurry the next reason you definitely want to use smart objects is with a lot of filters you'll want to apply for example a camera raw filter with my layer set to a smart object if i go up to filter camera raw filter and i apply a few different effects I make a bunch of changes, for example, and then I decide, wait, it's way too saturated, it looks like an orange. Because it's a smart object, I can just simply double click on my camera raw filter and it'll bring the menu back up where I can then adjust the saturation. I can even just hide that camera raw filter. And essentially just applies any of your filters as smart filters. You can do the same thing with like a blur, for example, you can blur it up. You can then just hide it. You can go back and change it if you'd like. It's super, super handy where of course, if I just did it on a rasterized layer, I can never go back and change it anymore. I have to re-import my layer or whatever and restart. And that's pretty much it for smart objects. But for now, let's get on to masking. All right, so masks hide or reveal parts of a layer without actually deleting anything. If I have a super artistic art piece that might keep you up at night and I just grab the erase tool and I start to just erase it, I can of course just click Control Z, but it's the same thing as before. If I make more changes to other layers, I won't be able to just do Control Z. And of course, if I try and just redraw it in, it's not gonna look the same at all. That's where masks can really come in handy if you do want to erase something instead of just using the erase tool what you want to do is you want to click this little button right here in the corner of photoshop or photo p and that will apply a mask to your layer and now with this mask selected you can use a white and a black brush the black is what is hidden and the white is what's shown so you can see from there i can like show different parts of it i can switch to black just by clicking x uh, and like erase certain parts of it i can of course like change my brush however i need to make it more blurred whatever uh, and now you're going to see that even though it looks all messed up it's all just on this mask layer which by the way you can alt click on your mask to see what the mask looks like and at any time you can just delete the mask and your whole layer will be back you can just use a white brush instead and bring any other layer back it's super super handy for working non-destructively you can make a selection of something in your scene add a new layer in and then just click the mask button right there and that's going to take the selection you've made and apply it as a mask on that layer so that is definitely something super handy to know you might think oh i'll go into the mask and i'll just like use the black brush and then just erase it from there that doesn't really work because now if i want to bring back that part of the mask i have to redraw it in and you're going to see now it applies to the rest of the layer too so it's i'd have to completely reselect my character and 
restart, you essentially need to work double non-destructively. Let's say you've got a bunch of different separate layers that you don't really want to mask one by one. You can actually just select them all, click control G to group them, or just click this little group button and add whatever you want into that group. You can actually apply masks to groups as well. This is super handy because now I just have one mask that will apply to all of these different layers. I can go in with my black brush and just erase all of them at once. And of course it's non-destructive. So if I just select white, I can come back and I can draw them back in if I need. This is also awesome if I have like an inner shadow on my character, for example, which by the way, they can add those nice little inner shadows like in the high CTR sort of GFX, which can look pretty nice. Uh, if I've got a layer with an inner shadow like that, or just really any other layer style, and I try and apply a mask to it, you're going to see that the inner shadow still follows that mask. So it's essentially just like erasing the layer, but of course I can just delete the mask and it'll go back to normal. This is where using group masks can come in handy. And it's just a super nice way if you almost want to add like two masks, because actually adding two masks like that doesn't actually work because now this one's like a vector mask. So that's a nice little thing to note about masks. And last but not least, there is also clip masking. You may or may not already know what this is, but for example, if you have a layer and let's say you work non-destructively, you go on a new layer and you start to draw, but you want to apply it to only your original layer. You can just control click on that layer and it will make a selection. You can add that as a mask, but sometimes that's just not really what you want to do. So instead you want to hold down alt between these two layers and then you just should be able to click between them and it'll clip mask it into the layer below it. So from there, we've got a clip mask. It just clips into that one. Those are super handy to use. If that doesn't work, you can just right click and do create clipping mask just like that. And that is how to use masks. Hopefully I was able to explain it pretty well then, but let's get on to the third and final main way to work non-destructively. This is going to be going over what I mentioned earlier. That is all of your different tools. You'll see that if you try to do it on a smart object, you got it. It says you have to rasterize it, which then if you do rasterize it and let's say you blur some stuff up, once again, you make a bunch of changes. You can't come back and fix this. How do you work non-destructively with your blur tool, your smudge tool, your clone stamp, all those other tools? Of course, with the paintbrush, you just add a new layer and draw in. And that's actually what we're doing for all of the other tools too. It's actually super handy because with all these tools, they do actually have a sample thing. I think the smudge one is different. With the smudge one, you enable sample all layers. And what that's going to do is with every single layer you have, for example, if I just draw in some yellow and some pink here or something like that, let me just draw some pink. If I go on my new layer here with my smudge tool and have sample all layers selected, it's going to go ahead and apply the smudge to every single layer. It's a little bit sort of really laggy, really delayed. But if I now wanted to go ahead and just remove that smudge, it's on its own layer. I can remove it whenever I want. I can, of course, just hide these two other ones and I can see what the smudge I did looks like. And yeah, that's how you work non-destructively with these different tools. The same thing applies for clone stamp. With clone stamp and I think another one, I can't remember which one, it doesn't have sample or layers. Instead, it just has sample and you can change current layer, which current layer should be the default. Current layer is where you do, is where you have to work destructively. It's only going to be sampling the current layer. If you do current and below, this is where if I put this like, if I put this here, it's going to be applying this clone stamp to this layer and below. So all of the layers below this is what this clone stamp is going to apply to. So if I just select the source for over here and then start to use the clone stamp tool, you're going to see it's only sourcing the uh, layer below it. Whereas, of course, if I go ahead and set it to all layers, now if I select this and start to draw that in, it's also going to be sampling from the layer above it too, this layer here. But from there, you've literally got your clone stamp tool stuff, as well as your smudge tool, your blur tool, which is sample all layers and whatever other tools and stuff. I'm sure there's so many different options and stuff. There's all these different options for all the different tools, but that is how you work non-destructively with tools. That is a super handy thing to know because of course you may have made a change with clone stamp in the past and just wanted to change it but then you realize nope you applied it to your original layer so you can't but working non-destructively with that means you can go back and just change it whenever you feel like you just go back hide it you can erase it do whatever you need because it's all in its own non-destructive layer as i said earlier in the video i am going to show you how you can apply lens blur now let's say you have a smart object let's say you have a bunch of different like layers applied to it or i don't know whatever you have applied and let's say you want to apply like some more effects like for example you might want to apply the lens blur but of course lens blur can't be applied to layers that are smart objects there's also a few other ones i think that you can't apply unless it's rasterized and as well maybe you just want to rasterize your image so you can 
I don't know, do whatever you want to do. This is kind of for not only when you want to use like the lens blur, but also if you just don't know how to work non-destructively in a certain situation. What I do, I'm sure there's probably other ways, but what I do is I select all of my layers. Maybe I have a bunch of different layers that I've done all these different changes on and stuff. It's as simple as just selecting them all. Select all your layers, do control G to group them into one layer, or you can just right click and do duplicate group. And then it's as simple as clicking control E and that'll combine all of the layers of your group into one rasterized layer from there you can apply your lens blur if you want to apply that you can you can apply whatever you want to do you can even apply like a second camera rule filter so if i made all these changes and i want to apply another camera rule filter i can just rasterize this layer once again apply another camera rule filter and whatever other effects i want to apply this is absolutely ugly i don't know what is going on right here but hopefully you kind of get the idea so that is how you can work non-destructively inside of photoshop and photo p